Uh, Watts was, if I can look at it that way, Watts was good training ground and he had a good territory with a lot of good talent. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he, not so much the national end of it. And then Atlanta wasn't that national at the time either. So, right. But it was just more of a smoother operation. You know what it was the difference was there was more money behind right. that uh, 74 operation in Atlanta. It wasn't Turner like struggling. Was back and back and yeah. right. So things started to like it look more professional. What was Watts like though back was he, he, was he like at what everybody says he is? Yeah, he was pretty hardcore, you know. He was, you know, he he was Leroy McGurk's right-hand man. Right. And then when, you know, then he took over from Leroy and and he run a hard ship, you know. I mean, he The travel was the travel shit. was horrible. He had no heart. The man did, obviously didn't have a heart because he, he would we would drive from Oklahoma City to New Orleans yeah. all night long and then we'd drive from New Orleans on a Monday night to be in Monroe on Tuesday and hadn't slept and then we'd drive to Jackson on Wednesday and Thursday. Who knows? Like, we traveled so much, 100,000 100, miles. Yeah, like I know Jack Victory pretty well. He's like, yeah, I three cars, 2,700 miles a week, oh, every yeah. week. And, you know, what are you making? You know, I mean, we were relatively almost on top. When I say almost on top, we were in the middle to on semifinal. top. Semifinal. Yeah. And, you know, what was it, 800 a week, you know? Well, it's not worth it for all that. And you're spending things. a fortune in motel rooms and gas and car and... But you know what? You had to do that. Back then, wasn't it like everybody, it's like eight months? You yeah, leave. eight months to a year. You know, you get beat so many times. You know, Unlike here, like like these days, you go somewhere and either you get fired and people stick around there. You will, It was commonplace to always... Stay at least a year. And then go somewhere else. Then go somewhere the, else. Right. As a fresh face. Mm -hmm. And I went back to Oklahoma. What was I thinking? I went back to <laughs> the hell. But, Did it change or nah? No. Same. It was pretty rough. It wasn't as bad. It wasn't as bad, but it was still bad. It was still rough. Mm -hmm. Orndorff was on the scene then, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, I remember Paul and I was in Oklahoma, and Jake the Snake was getting started. Is that when JYD was started together? JYD was, was getting his real big, huge mm -hmm. push. Freebirds yeah. were in. Was Hate? They weren't in yet. They weren't in yet. I don't think. I don't so think this is before like New Orleans, the Superdome, all that. A yeah, little before that. Yeah, a little before that, because in New Orleans we used to wrestle downtown. At the at auditorium, the auditorium. Mm -hmm. yeah, which was rough, and but in Oklahoma in eighty and eighty one is where I started getting a little bit of a push. I got to like the middle of the card, semifinal. Uh -huh. Watts, give me a break, uh, because by then too my wrestling ability had improved. My psychology was always kind of there, but it was honed and tuned up because of the years, eight years on the road prior as a manager and then the Florida experience and the Carolina experience and watching great talent got to Oklahoma put put interjected that in there and it was start I start to see stuff come around you mm -hmm. know, I, I could I could with confidence walk out and and do a, a semi-final match or right you know middle of the card match so, uh, your late, latest days like in uh, WCW they brought in Watts Oh, yeah. How was that like? Terrible. And I knew what since I was a kid. I busted my butt for him. And, you know, they put us on that pay-per-view or something one time, our TV show, pay-per-view with two Mexican guys. Uh -huh. They couldn't speak a word of English. <laughs> they told them one thing uh -huh. to do and told us another. Real. Okay? Was that now, that Starcade or something, I yeah, think? Yeah, it was a big show. In St. Louis, I it think, that tag show. tournament. Yeah, I think so. And it was horrible match. I mean, Hayes and I would have to. I mean, we've been we we've been totally drunk out of our mind and had great matches. Right. We were sober that night, <laughs> and it was a stinkeroo right. because we had two guys that didn't know nothing about the English language, and they were told by the office one thing, and we was told another. And let me just back up another thing about an embarrassing moment. You remember? The pay-per-view that we did where Michael and I did the live singing, you know, we had the so. rock and roll band right. thing going, mm -hmm. which was like hilarious. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew it was just, a, it was hilarious. Right. I thought, anyway, we, Michael and I thought it was hilarious. I don't know if the rest of the country did or not, but remember we were supposed to, they had the, the fireworks went off and we had the mics and we we're going to sing that song that we wrote on the way of the ring. It was on some pay-per-view. Right. Huge, huge pay-per-view. Uh -huh. The mic switch was off. <laughs> so when we were, the music was playing, but nothing was coming out. Oh boy. And we couldn't hear the music. So it was in the truck. Right. The, the angle before that was uh, somebody was fighting outside. 
Dusty was running the truck. Uh huh. And somehow the switch. They, they, yeah, it got all fouled up. Turned back on. So that seems kind of like typical of what WCW what what it was coming to, just stuff well, like that. It was just why in the world, man? How can you put you? How can you put us in that position? Right. You're setting us up. You put us in a position. Thank goodness for the camera crew guys that were friends of ours. Mm -hmm. They managed to shoot the video that we shot mm -hmm. during our entrance because we couldn't we couldn't sing because <laughs> we couldn't hear the music. <laughs> But we were live. We had, yeah. had to do. We had yeah. to do something. It was a shit or go blind, you know. It was a very awkward position to be in, and um, it was like when we did the thing to raise the money at uh, at uh, center stage at Christmas time for the kids. We did the concert. Mm -hmm. Hayes and I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, could we sing? Hell no. 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 Could we play anything? No. Nope. But. We tried to make it entertaining. We had a really good band, and we just everybody knew we were just jacking just around, man. Fun. We were just we said we sold out the whole European tour. We never, <laughs> they knew we were bullshit, you right, know. Right. It was a it was a gimmick. Well, but the thing of it was though that was serious that we were, were going to do this to raise money, to raise food, for the for, yeah. children and for the homeless at Christmas time. Right. Do you know how much backing and support and and plugs we got from Turner. probably not too many we got nothing yeah we got nothing we didn't get one plug saying hey by the way if you want to go have a hoot and help the homeless or help the kids go see Hayes and bring Garvin. some cans of food because right. Garvin and Hayes are going to really make a fool of themselves at center stage on Friday night right but bring some food right that that's that's the support that we got